you know, Eddie, it's been a couple of weeks you've been working with us here at Around Town, and I, I really don't know too much about you. Uh, what country are you from? Guess. Yes. Are you married? Guess. Do you have any children? How many do you have? Guess. <laughs> Eddie. During the Christmas holiday season, have you ever got down on your knees and licked the balls on the Christmas tree? <laughs> yes. Hey, Eddie, have you ever ate a loaf pinched by a German shepherd on a hot summer day? Yes. <laughs> Wait a second. A couple weeks ago, you were singing happy birthday on the show. You mean to tell me... Oh, happy birthday. Happy birthday. No, 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 no. Don't, please, don't sing happy birthday. You mean happy birthday and yes is the only English you know? No. It's around time live from Wilmington. <laughs> what? <laughs> show for you tonight you want to stay right there don't go anywhere because we got uh saturday bobby rydell wildwood saturday. days wildwood saturday. wildwood days wildwood days saturday. every day is just, yeah yeah oh it's gorgeous out there yeah. we've got that who else we got uh, jeff the jeff reagan trio and that's coming Renowned your way jazz trio yeah yeah, yeah yeah but uh nice opening there danny you guys worked hard on that i'm <laughs> sure <laughs> Eddie Agria and da Crazy Jack in there with Crazy you. Crazy Jack, yeah. They, they're the Round Town Live Comedian uh, Players, we call them, you know. And yeah. uh, Jimmy Biggs is supposed to be part of that. But uh, 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 Jimmy, we've got ain't something... gonna, Jimmy ain't going to be on this show. He's not. <laughs> no, he's, not gonna be, he's on every show out there. He's not going to be on this show. In fact, he's getting more time than I am. That really makes me mad, you know, uh, yeah, with well, my ego and all that. You know. He's been getting more letters than you. Oh, I, I'm telling you, a lot of letters coming in. And speaking of letters and stuff, uh, we're going to do that. But we got some exciting shows coming up in the, in the future yes, here. Yes, we do. Next week, we have the Delphonics. You know the Delphonics? Yeah. <laughs> La La means I love you. And didn't I blow your mind this yeah, time? Yeah. Didn't I blow your mind this time? <laughs> Get that right, Eddie. And, and, and the week after that, we have this uh, Dr. Mary... Uh, now, i got to get this name right because uh, a couple of times I've said it wrong, but her name is Dr. Mary Signagiglio or something like that. She's a, a hypnotist, and she's supposedly like the best in Delaware. So we're going to have some audience participation that night? Well, we're, we're going to get yeah, her to yeah. hypnotize a couple people in the audience. Yeah, we're going to have You know, we could be cruel, that. too, yeah, you know? Yeah. When you come home or hear the bell ring, that type of deal, you'll do different things. Well, that's coming your way. That's two weeks from now. And tonight, tonight, though, Bobby Rydell. Bobby Rydell, I'm, yes. I'm excited. I am really excited. I mean, you guys remember this guy here, Bobby Rydell. Yeah. And he's, he's with us tonight right here on uh, Round Town Live right here in Wilmington, Delaware. Big hand. And uh, that's coming your way here real quick. And uh, he's out back signing autographs. That's what he's been doing. This, this you know, we, we were t got a chance to talk. You know, you, you reflect back to those dimes. I mean, this guy was on top of the world. I mean, this, uh, yes, you couldn't get any better. Still good looking. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He, Tom Brokoff is what I said. He don't like that. He don't like that. Well, man, we're going to have him on. We're going to maybe even have an opportunity for viewers out there to call in and talk to Bobby Rydell right here on the show as we oh, sometimes fantastic. do. So fantastic. we're waiting on the phone. We're waiting on the phone. They forgot the phone or something <laughs> like that. So we're, that's coming your way. But uh, it, what else is happening? you got the mailbag we do each and every week, of course, the mailbag. And Ryan uh, is our technical director in there. Ryan, let's see if you can do this real quick and punch up that address. Or it's somebody that's interested in writing in to Around Town Live and asking us questions or you just want to make some comments or whatever. And each and every week, uh, Danny reads them right here live on the air. Yeah, you and can Danny, send... Danny right there is uh, the... Oh, what do you think of that haircut I got, Timmy, huh? Yeah, it looks good. Look you look good? Does you it make my nose look, look bigger? Look. Yeah, that 
bet it does. <laughs> it's the biggest thing on me, that's for sure. Besides but, my ego. <laughs> but once again, if they, if they want to write in, they can do so. Positive promotion, 26 Fox Hunt Drive, Suite 188, Bear, Delaware, 19701. That's 19701. Do it again, Danny. I mean, you do it so uh, well. Positive promotions, 26 Fox Hunt Drive, Suite 188. Bear, Delaware, 19701. Don't send them here to Suburban Cable. Because yeah, they get yeah, pretty ticked yeah, off yeah. about but to send and, the mail here. You can have, write in each and every week. Uh, you can write in each and every day. And Danny goes through the mail each and every week and picks a few letters to read right here on. You guys ready for this? The Mailbag! <laughs> The first letter we got here is from a young lady from the University of Delaware. And can I get a camera shot on this letter here? Check this out. It, oh, yeah. it, must, have take, it must have taken her a while to, to uh, do this one here, but it has oh, Tim, wait, Tim, oh, Tim, oh, Tim, oh, Tim, 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 Tim. <laughs> so I guess she's in love with Tim. Is it a but she? you know, is Jimmy got taken off. I want to be sure. Is it a she? Well, her name's Bridget. Okay, Bridget Warner okay, from okay. University of Delaware. She <laughs> says, I love around the town. She says, P.S., please say hi to Bobby Warner, uh, Lonnie DiGiuseppe, the Haven Gang, and happy birthday to Simon Pletcher. Simon Fletcher, so that means we got to get Eddie to sing happy birthday again tonight or anything? Eddie, <laughs> no, <nah>, please. <laughs> <laughs> he screwed the skit up already. <laughs> no, he didn't. He was a good boy. Uh, next letter we got is from Corinne and David Wexler from Hollyoke, Delaware. And they say, uh, Dear Around Town Live, I caught your show with the Times last week and couldn't thank you enough. So much in love was the song that my husband and I fell in love to and brought back so many memories. In fact, we ended up staying up till 2 in the morning. Sometimes we don't do that, you know, but uh, that night we did stay up late. So you can imagine what we were doing. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, we love the new show, and please have more artists than one from the 60s. Can we please get four tickets to an upcoming show? And again, uh, ladies and gentlemen, like I said, if you want tickets to the show, uh, just write us at the Positive Promotions address that you see on your screen, and uh, come on down and join us. We have a good time down here. And that's all the letters you're going to pull out of the mailbag. That's it for the mailbag, guys. That's it. Yeah, the mailbag's over with it. You only picked two, two, two or three letters out this Well, one. you know, because we, we have some exciting guests tonight, and uh, another thing, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about Jimmy Biggs. What's been with him lately? Hey, he wants to be on this show. He, you know, he's on enough show. I figured he don't need to be on this show. Well, you know, I was week. driving down uh, Route 40, and, uh, you know, what happened was I had stopped over to see you guys at the new studio. And uh, Jimmy seemed a little under the weather, and uh, he says, I'm going out to chill. So I drove down Route 40, and there he is over in the junkyard. What's he doing over there? Well, I, we, can, we can look at it right now. I mean, here's what Jimmy was doing in the junkyard, if Ryan's ready. <laughs> You know what I like doing at the end of the day, when I'm just out goofing off and it's my own time, I don't have to pull the TVs, I like going through junkyards. Like here, here's an old Pontiac Bonneville. It probably served somebody real well in its day, but it's seen a better day now. You see the doors dented, it's missing a hubcap, and it's just ready for the scrapyard. But as you're walking through the junkyard, it kind of brings back memories and stuff like that. Like there's an old Comet. I remember the Comets. Yeah, I don't remember their song. It was like Bill Haley in the comments, but kind of remembers, reminds me of old stuff like that. And here's an old Volkswagen. Uh, what's that song? Uh, I don't remember that song. They didn't have a Volkswagen song, I don't think. No. And Cadillacs. Remember old Cadillacs and stuff like that? There's a neat old Cadillac. Really neat old cars. And here's an old, uh, old uh, Plymouth. Not a bad car, but that's what's neat about it. After I'm done the TV business at the end of the day, I can just be myself and come out and walk around the junkyard, and that's my favorite thing. And here's an old car. What? Ah, there's a car I want right there. Look at it. Check this baby out. Makes me want to... Let us 
I feel as old as that car. And kind of brings back memories, though, doesn't it? Back to you, Tim. <laughs> I don't think, I don't, I, I might be mistaken, but I don't think Bobby Rydell was singing about that particular Valari. I mean, I don't think that had anything to do with it. But there was an ad that came out when they did a 70s. I have to ask Bobby about that, you know, that they did do, use some of his music. I remember the ads, Valari. Oh, give it up, yeah. please. <laughs> but he's coming. He's on his way right here, right here on Around Town Live. We got Bobby Rydell. But before we get to Bobby Rydell, we've got another group that's the coming The Jeff out. Reagan Trio are coming Yeah, up. big hand for Jeff Reagan Trio. They're going to be right here with us when we come back. It's time for us to do our commercial break time and all that so you want to stay there with us and, and you're waving about something what are you waving about over there thumbs up we're going to go to commercial break is that what you're telling me we can go to commercial break and all that so we're going to do that come back here to jeff reagan trio then bobby right down we're going to give you the opportunity to talk to him too right here around town live <laughs> That was a round town live band. Welcome back to the show, and we got an exciting show for you. We got Bobby Rydell coming on, but as promised, before we get to Bobby Rydell, and you're going to have an opportunity to call in, so we want you to stay with us because you're going to be able to ask Bobby questions you've never been, been able to ask him before on tonight's show. So you want to stay right there and have your telephone near. But before we do that, I've got a fantastic band that I'm going to let play for us, and then I'm going to come back and talk to him. And that, if you would, put your hands together and welcome the Jeff Reagan Band. <laughs>
Uh, that's as far as I go. So, Jeff, you're going to have to lean this way because I know that this is Jeff Reagan right here. Am I correct? Yes, correct. Yeah. Now, this is jazz, a strictly jazz band. You, where do you guys perform at? Uh, mostly the Philadelphia area and the tri-state area, usually Philadelphia, New Jersey. And uh, right now we're working on an album that hopefully will be out uh, this summer or the fall on uh, Caracap Music. Carrot Cap Music, so be sure and look for that. Now, you guys are fabulous sound. I mean, uh, been into jazz long, Jeff? Well, yeah, I, I remember listening to jazz when I was like 10 years old, so uh, my parents had jazz records, and I was always listening up going to them. I got sidetracked a little to, to rock music for a while, but then I got back with the jazz, and what I'm trying to do is I'm not trying to get real heavy with the real far out, you know, stuff that some people don't like. I like to find a happy medium between the good old songs. That's Take the Atrium by Duke Ellington, and Cole Porter and George Gershman, just some real good tunes that everyone can enjoy. Uh, and everybody did it. I, I know I enjoyed that one. Do you know Rob K? Uh, we've met before, yes. Rob K knows everybody. I just want to make that clear. If you're into music out there, if you want to be somebody, you got to know Rob K or you're not going to get anywhere. Now, real quick, if you could, introduce us to some of the other guys here in the band. Yeah, we have Jerry Nash on bass. Jerry and I went back. Yeah. I just met Jerry uh, last fall, as a matter of fact, and we've been clicking together, and uh, I really enjoy his playing. And Mr. Marty McGee on drums. Fantastic sounding band. Now, this is a, a jazz trio, I guess it is, and there's just the three of you. And if somebody was looking to catch you someplace here, they can look for you in the Philadelphia, Jersey, and possibly yeah. here in the Wilmington area. Yeah, yeah, possibly. We're looking for bookings. Anyone, you know, give the show a call, and uh, we're looking for bookings. What do you think? Bobby Rydell on tonight's show. Great, great. I hope you got a VCR running. Oh, yeah, definitely. You can tell everybody, hey, I, I was on the same stage that Bobby Rydell. Now, Bobby's probably not going to perform for us because he's a little under the weather tonight, but you were on the same stage with Bobby Rydell. It's exciting. It's exciting for me, and it's exciting for me to have you guys here. If you get a chance, keep an eye out. What's the name of the album going to be? I uh, don't know yet. We're still searching for a title. You, mu a title. you musicians are all the same. I, I never have a name for it until it's released, but you want to keep an eye out for the Jeff Reagan uh, I guess trio. it's a trio, and it's a jazz trio. If you like jazz music, you're going to really like them. And now what we're going to do now, we're going to go to commercial break and everything. Any last plug you want this year, opportunity, if somebody's looking to, to book you guys into a place here locally, how would yeah, it go? Just, just uh, either call the show, get in touch with Danny, and look for us in the Philadelphia area in March. Just look in the papers, look in the uh, art section every Friday. You'll see the name. There you go. So be sure and keep an eye out for the Jeff Reagan Trio. And right now, they're going to take us to commercial break. And when we come back, we're going to have Mr. Bobby Rydell right here. And we're going to give you an opportunity to talk to him tonight, too. So if you guys are ready, take us to commercial break. And we'll be right back right after this. Rob K, Dave Moore, we got special. I didn't even talk to you guys tonight, so I'm going to get a chance to do that before we get out of here, too. But right now, I promised you, we talked about it for a couple of weeks, and uh, how we got him here, I'll never know. The guy's fighting the flu and everything else. But put your hands together and welcome Mr. Bobby Rydell. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. Bobby, you look good. You look good. I know you're not feeling too good. A little bit. Everybody's got it, you know, so it has to go around the household, I guess. Yeah, but, we, but you were still singing tonight for fans. I mean, we stopped and had a little couple of cups of that coffee. That was really nice. Uh, you know, this is, this is really one of my favorite places in Delaware. I worked here a lot, you know, throughout the Delaware area. Uh, and um, festivals. Uh, the Italian Festival. Oh, yeah. The yeah, Italian yeah. Festival was absolutely phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of good fans here in uh well, let's, 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 you know, we, we, we had an opportunity to talk before the show and everything. Let's just reflect back. I mean, I look, and, and, and to me, I've all, I would never, you know, that's not ever going to happen where I can be that famous, uh, you know, that big. Well, you, were, you, were the, you were the biggest thing in America at one point, buddy. I mean, come on. I mean, wouldn't you guys agree? Biggest, biggest man. I, 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 
then, then, you, then you had these four, four, four clowns come over from England and that kind of do things in damper there. But there's a story behind all of it. Well, I mean, uh, with the four clowns? Yeah, no, no, what, not with the four. We'll talk about that. But, but you got, you've been, you know, they talk about an overnight sensation and everything and how easy, you know, some people come into it and they just came. To, and uh, I've heard so many stories how people just found you guys standing like, like yeah. fr Frankie Avalon and you and the, all of them standing on corners in yeah. Philadelphia and just, you kind of just jumped in the show business no. because you look good and blah, blah. That's not the case with you. Well, I was never really a great looking guy. <laughs> no, you know? no, I, hey, wait a minute now, now, wait a minute. No, this, this, no. It's just good looking girls. It's just good looking girls, I'm telling you, right there. Hey, this, this is how you were. Yeah, buddy. but I'm what happened? <laughs> still, Something still, happened along the way. Still, still nice looking, but, but you were over in, in, in Philadelphia. I mean, now you started as a youngster, youngster, six yeah. years old or something like that. Uh, if I had any talent within me whatsoever, uh, Tim, my dad was the first one to see it. I used to sit down, watch television, and try to impersonate everybody that I saw on television. So my dad used to take me around to clubs in the Philadelphia area. We'd go to Palumbo, Skioli's, uh, the 2-4 Club, the BR Club, the RDA Club, the old Latin Casino when it was in town in Philadelphia. And my dad would ask the club owner, is it okay if my son, you know, got up and, you know, sang a few songs and did a few impersonations. And um, this was at a very, very young age, Tim. You know, so I'm on stage and I'm doing what I'm doing and people are going... And you're enjoying it, like it. this, And I said, wow, that's all I have to do when they do that? That's a wonderful feeling. Now, one thing you did do, before you go any further, because you talk about impersonations and everything, yeah. is uh, you were telling me about uh, uh, Frank Fontaine. Now, <laughs> I, I'm going to put you on the spot here, no, Bobby, that's because okay. yeah, that's, cause that's okay. one of your ones that you yeah. did. Uh, uh, Frank Fontaine, for those of you who uh, remember the old Jackie Gleason show, uh, his character was called Crazy Guggenheim. But prior to that, the character was called John L. C. Savoni. And I, I worked with Mr. Fontaine uh, uh, quite a bit, and he used to go like, "Hi, Joe. Hello, Mr. Dunleavy." <laughs> great, 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 great. No, <laughs> but I, 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 people my age, I know, are remembering that and everything else. But we we, we had an opportunity. We're out signing autographs tonight and everything else. We're going to talk about that a little bit more. But to, to go back to your career and where it was coming from, from the South Philly, and a lot of guys came out of there at the same time. Yeah, but I sure I just want to let people know that you weren't, you know, it was an overnight success for you, but it was many years worth of work to get to that point, to get that oh, overnight success. Sure. Yeah, now, sure. it happened for you, I guess you were 17? The first hit record? Right. Yeah, first hit, uh, hit record was uh, the summer of uh, 1959. It was a song called Kissin' Time. And I think the only reason it became a hit was that we named practically every city in the United States. They're kissing in Cleveland, Kansas City, too. They're welling in Wildwood, back in Waterloo. They're smooching all over in Detroit, too. Guaranteed to be played in all those cities. All those cities, <laughs> that's right. If you mention, hey, there, yeah. there's, hey, Rob K., that's where you missed out. You never mentioned any cities in any of the... <laughs> so next... Who knew? Who knew? But that, know. that was your first big hit, and that was done on what, what label was that? That was done on Cameo. And uh, we recorded it at uh, 1405 Locust Street in Philadelphia uh, with a, a wonderful, wonderful uh, saxophonist who played uh, just about every reed you can play. He played the alto, uh, uh, baritone, tenor, soprano sax. His name was Georgie Young. And he had a group called Georgie Young and the Rockin' Box. And we recorded it in a studio much smaller than this, two-track and uh, done with a Hammond B3 organ, you know, and stuff like that, and put it out and became and the first hit record. And then you had to go to Cloud Nine on when that happened. I mean, 17 years old. And who, like I said, you know, who, you know, Bernie Lowe, who was the owner of the company uh, of Cameo Records at that time, he said, okay, Bobby, he said, you have your first hit record. He says, now the second one is gonna become even harder, and the third, you know, so on and so forth, if you're lucky enough to be around that long. And, and, and thank God I had a, a, a very, very good career with the Cameo Parkway Records. I was with them from 1957 to 1964. Right, when the British invasion hit. Yeah, and then we're going to talk about that a little bit before okay. before before we get into that. You you you've done so much. I mean, with the movies and the different people. Mm -hmm. you, you know, we talking about some of the different people right. that you were with. Frank Sinatra for being one. I mean, uh, now Mike Mike Nice was with us today too. Yes. And, uh, of course, Mike is one of the producers here on the show, and he was talking that he's heard a lot of you know he's heard Frank Sinatra singing, he's heard her, but you sing it better than anybody. And that's oh, new, uh, you know New I, York, New York, and I, 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 I don't know about or, that. or my way, my way, I should uh, say. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what, you know, uh, we all know and we all read about uh, Mr. Sinatra. You know, a lot of people like to call him the old man, Mr. S, you know, uh, uh, whatever. And uh, I've seen the man perform, you know, 
quite a few times in my lifetime, and uh, he's always been very, very congenial to me. He's, he's always had the time to say hello, sit down, how you doing, Bobby? And now we all know that what we read in the paper, that he is going through a time in his life that we really can't understand what's going on. Does he have this? What is his problem? So on and so forth. My wife and I went to see him about three or four years ago in Atlantic City. I think he was working the Sands. And, uh, of course, he was using monitors. And uh, maybe the chops weren't the chops of 1960-something, 50-something. But there's something about him when he walks on stage that he just takes total command of the stage. And you know it's Frank Sinatra who's walking out there. And maybe he's not singing the song as well as he sang the song 10, 15 years ago. But when you sit there and you watch him, he's an actor. The idol. The idol. I mean, not only that, he's, he's an actor with the drink, with the cigarette. And lyrically, and as far as somebody relating and telling you a story, I don't think there's any singer in my lifetime that I know of that can relate a lyric Boy, like Frank. Mr. Sinatra did. I'd agree with that. I'd agree with that 100%. I, you know, he, was, he, was, he was the idol. I know it's, a, it, it's, it's touching for you when we talk about it because the, these guys are getting on in age. I mean, Frank Sinatra is having some medical... Uh, we don't know what it is. Well, I mean, that's what, I, that's yeah, what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, right, uh, yeah, I mean, my dad and, and Mr. Sinatra are... Uh, same age, oh. 81 years old. I didn't realize that. I didn't yeah. realize that. 80, I, 81 years yeah, old? Well, my dad is December the 3rd, and I think Mr. Sinatra is uh, December 12th. I guess your dad was a big fan of Frank's then, or didn't care for him. I, I, I find I, men didn't like him too much. Women liked him a lot. Men don't care for him too much. My mom never liked Sinatra. <laughs> no, 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 no. She never liked Sinatra, and uh, my dad, when I was four years old, we, used to, we had a theater in Philadelphia called the Earl Theater on 11th and Market Street, and at four years old, my dad took me to see people like Benny Goodman, Tex Beneke, Artie Shaw, Tommy Dorsey. That's the first thing that I first started doing in my career was play drums. I saw Gene Krupa with the Benny Goodman band well, when I was four years old. Well, let's tell them how you found out about drums. So, I mean, I, I thought that was an interesting story. We was talking about that and how you got that set at Ludwig's when you... Uh, oh, with my dad? <laughs> yeah, your dad. Now, was your dad in, in, the, in the business itself or...? Mm, my dad, he used to walk around back then, you know, with the, with the, with, with the coonskin, uh, you know, and he used to like to play a ukulele, you know, he was like a ladies' guy, you know? <laughs> it's like a real ladies' guy, my dad, you know? And, um... And, and I think it's because of my dad that I'm, uh, that I'm in the business. Uh, I guess a lot of people out there know that my real name is not Bobby Rydell. My real name is Robert Louis Ritterelli. And my mother's parents came from the old country. From French a place Indian, called, then, huh? No. <laughs> <laughs> came from a place called uh, Provincia di Campobasso in Abruzzi, uh, in Italia. And my grandfather, uh, from what I understand, uh, my mom's dad worked in Italian vaudeville. Anyway, to get back to the drum story, uh, my dad was working for uh, a, a, a company called Electronite Carbon Company. And he was a machine shop worker. He made brushes and stuff like that. And he cut his middle finger off on his right hand, and he got a $3,000 bonus, right? <laughs> For cutting, you know, his finger Jimmy, off. Jimmy, you cut your finger off, you ain't getting no money, so I've, I've got to make that clear right. to Jimmy real quick. So he, he cut his finger off, and uh, I had had, you know, a, a few set of drums that were terrible i mean absolutely terrible we used to go down to south street in philadelphia you know and buy a set called revere or something you know that that that, that maybe they were ninety dollars kind of what jimmy plays <laughs> on <over there. laughs> no, uh, you know, jimmy and i were talking about this brand new set called mapex yeah yeah nice but job. uh my dad lost his finger got a three thousand dollar bonus we went down to a place in uh in philadelphia called eighth street music sales and i bought my uh, well my dad bought me my first legitimate set of drums. Sacrificed his finger for that set of drums, yes, my did. friend. <laughs> yes, he sure did. And it was William F. Ludwig, WFL, and they were Black Oyster Pearl, which is the same set that Ringo, Ringo Starr, used when he was, uh, you know, with the Beatles. And then I gave the set away. Not that Wish I you gave, still had it today. I, oh, are you oh, yeah, kidding? Oh, yeah, oh, are some? you kidding? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I had a Corvette that I wish I still had today. <laughs> well, yeah. did, you, did, you beat, did, you, did you still beat on the drums a little bit now and then? I still play. Yeah. I still play. Yeah. I, I, uh, I used them in the act. Uh, I used to do a drum solo, right, in the act. And, uh, but now, like, the hands are getting a little slow. They don't move around. 
you know, the set too fast. I'm a left-handed player, which creates a lot of problems. So now when I'm on the road, if I see a trio or somebody that really is playing like really nice, really good music, piano, bass, you know, I'll ask the drummer, do you mind if I sit in? And then I just sit in. You're going to tell Bobby right now, no, you can't, you, can't, you can't, yeah, no, you can't do it. Yeah. Just, just go in and play time, you yeah, know, yeah. ding, 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 ding. So you still, you, you still try to tap and beat on them every now and then? Oh, and yeah, I still, have, I still have a set at home. Now, yeah. Yeah, as far as, you, you, you've always been known as a vocalist. I mean, that's what, when you perform, right. I mean, that's the main thing. People right. come, I, do you play other instruments outside of? I fool around a little bit with bass. Uh, we were talking about uh, Fenders, and uh, when I did Bye Bye Birdie back in 19... Bye Bye Birdie! Hey, 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 hey. Long ago. Well, now, before, now we're going we're gonna to get in talking about the bass. Long time ago. <laughs> we're going to get in talking about the bass and everything. I always <laughs> sidetrack and all that. But now now you brought up Bye Bye Birdie, so I have to go there because the band and everything, and I were talking. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, first thing they say, Bye Bye Birdie, they say, and Margaret. Who and knows? how was it? I mean, how was she? <laughs> I oh, beg your pardon. <laughs> how was how she? Was was <laughs> wait a minute. Hey, wait, wait, wait. Turn out the lights and call in the law. <laughs> Turn out the lights and call in. <laughs> or call in the but, law uh, and turn out the whatever. I, that, that movie and career, Margaret. Movie career. I mean, that, it started off with Bye Bye Birdie, I guess. Yeah, I really didn't have a big motion picture career. I, I, I did a couple of things. Uh, Bye Bye Birdie, of course, was the dominant uh, motion picture that I did. And it was, uh, it, it, it was and it, it will be a classic, you know, forever. But Anne Margaret, to this day, um, uh, she still calls. I call her, say hello, how you doing, so on and so forth. And uh, just about... Mm, I guess it was two years ago, my wife had gone through uh, two breast cancer surgeries, and, and thank God she's doing fine, and Anne was working Valley Forge Music Fair. And I had always told Anne, I said, when you come to Philadelphia, give me a call. You want to come to the house, you want to have something to eat, you know, whatever. Get away from the crowds. <laughs> exactly. I've seen how it was, by the way, yeah. because with you tonight, just yeah. sitting there having a cup of coffee. We, you know, uh, well, those people, yeah, are wonderful. Oh, they're wonderful Absolutely people, but you know, it, it must get over. Well, you know what, Tim? It's always nice, you know, when people come up and ask for your autograph. <laughs> when they don't, it's over. <laughs> it hadn't happened to me yet, so I, I don't know. But it, you know, I was, like I was when you wave and <laughs> nobody waves back. You know, <laughs> but it, what, you what, know what, stuff what, like that. You what, know. what really but, surprised me, though, when we. we we're getting out of the limo in certain situations. People were recognizing your face still. I mean, after all And I'm all not these that years. much of a recognizable yeah. no, guy. No, no. I'm, I'm really not. You know? Delaware's big fans here in Delaware. Oh, I, I, like I said earlier. <laughs> <here, you know? laughs> and I'm sure they... Mom, Dad, my wife, my son, my daughter, my grandson, we, we uh, have my a, cousins. Uh, thanks for all coming down. We have an but, audience for tonight. Back to Aunt Margaret. I'm, back I'm sorry, Aunt Margaret. No, no. <laughs> so anyway, I tell this to Aunt. She calls, and she was working Valley Forge Music Fair. Unfortunately, Valley Forge is over now, which is unfortunate. I mean, we lost a lot of great nightclubs: uh, Skiolis, Palumbo's, Valley Forge, uh, Copacabana. You just go across the country. There's no more cabaret. And Ann said, Bobby, did you really mean what you said? I said, of course, Ann. I said, you come over to the house. I said, what do you think I'm going to have? 50, you know, 50 people over the house? You know, because, <laughs> because Ann Margaret's coming over? Anyway, we went to see the show. My mom, my dad, myself, my wife. And my mom and my dad. Quite an entertainer in herself, too, Ann Margaret. Oh, oh she's so super. Unbelievable. Absolutely super. And uh, so my mom, my dad, and my wife, they went home with our car. I waited for Ann and her husband, Roger Smith. They had a limo, and we left Valley Forge Music Fair at about, oh, 12.30 in the morning. Got to my house, which is no more than 20 minutes away from Valley Forge, and we started eating angel hair pasta at like 2 o'clock in the morning because she loves Italian food, and we're an Italian family. So we had angel hair pasta, meatballs, and salad. Uh, you know, we had everything. And then we got what we call an Italian Ah, you do. We got gas. We got we, we got gas. It was unbelievable. It was, it was, it was Next time, Aunt Margaret. Yeah. Next... <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. Next time, Aunt Margaret. The broccoli. Down, I'm not sure. It could have been the broccoli. I'm not. Bobby Rydell. He's he's going to be with us. As I said, we're going to give you an opportunity to call in and talk to Bobby Rydell also here in just a couple of minutes. It's time for us to pay for this show. Of course, we're going to take another commercial break if those guys get geared up in there. And when we come back, Bobby, uh, I tell you what. Before we do, I, I, I'm never going to be a famous singer. Uh, God help me, I can't sing. They asked me to, you know, when I'm taking a shower and singing, would I please stop Everybody singing in the shower? Good in the shower. No, not this no, one. Not this one. On. But, but there's one thing I'll never, I, I can always say. I was on stage with Bobby Rydell and I did, Valare. Uh. <laughs> what's, what's wrong with that? Come on, help me one time, Bobby. One time. Just one time. 
Town live band. Yeah. yeah, they need to lo learn longer songs now. That's uh, yeah. <laughs> Rob Kane is around town live band right there. As, as always, they do a fantastic one job. One of my favorite tunes too. Oh yeah. I'm a Looney Tune nut. <laughs> oh, you can't forget it. That's all See, I want. See, you watch. recognize? See, I'm, I'm, I, I, have, I have no no ear for that at all. Oh. I, they, they're playing Beatles really? songs over here and different things. I don't ever recognize I mean, any of them. You know? No, no, yeah. Willie. Really? <laughs> uh, very very quiet. <laughs> Will Hunt and Wabbits. Uh, <laughs> Bobby Rydell, I'm telling oh. you. You never know. You never know. <laughs> Mom and Dad over there. You got to love it. You got to love it. <laughs> you got to love it. Oh, really? Remember this, guys. I'm telling you. If, if you can't, who, who, what, what camera can do this? I, I, I just, I got to show this. I, uh, one of the uh, people here in the audience came up just to get an autograph Barbara. tonight. Uh, Barbara came up and uh, she brought one of Bobby's. I guess this is one of your first albums, Bobby, or is this? Uh, uh, this is what? It's uh, biggest hit. So that's volume all two. Volume two. <laughs> biggest two. hit. <laughs> <laughs> so. Volume one went into the toilet, so we came up with volume two, and uh, we did the, the, Oh, my wife told, told me to tell you, I moved up here from Texas, and we did go out, and we learned, and she taught me the cha-cha. The cha-cha-cha. Yeah, I, I did learn it. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So that was uh, part of your year there, big too. big dance. Well, let's go back to that time a little bit, because you, you were on top of the world, like I said, and you're touring Europe. Yeah. You're touring Europe. It's 1963, and you're driving down, and all of a sudden, what happens? Okay, to start it off, uh, number one, uh, went to Europe with Anne Margaret to do a command performance for the royal family for Bye Bye Birdie. While there, I also recorded an album. Out of the album came my third million seller, was a song called Forget Him. While there, I also toured with a young lady by the name of Helen Shapiro, who was like the Brenda Lee of the UK, of the United Kingdom. So we're touring in a bus, and we're going all throughout England, you know, Liverpool, Blackpool, Waltham style, all over the place. And we're in this bus, and there's a Rolls Royce. Oh, they're, 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 we're not taking phone calls Excuse yet, me, are wait, we? Wait, wait, wait. you want to answer it? Okay, My, go ahead, Bobby. Bobby. All right. yeah. Hi, how you doing? Hi, that's Bobby right now. No, that's McDonald's. How many, how, wait, wait, you want it with or without? <laughs> hey, that's really here, you know that South my, Philly. My wife and I are a big fan of yours. And we really enjoyed you through the years, and we just want to say thank you for all, for all that you've done for us. Because uh, you know some of the songs that you had bring back a lot of memories to us, and uh, we really enjoy it. What's your name? Uh, Ryan. Ryan? Yes. Are, are you in from uh, from Delaware, Ryan? Yes, I am. Newcastle. Newcastle. Thanks an awful lot, Ryan. I really appreciate no, it. No, thank hey, you, hey, Bob. Hey, Ryan, we got something for you too. Okay, now back to, no, I, I, I didn't do that, but <laughs> that wasn't, no, that Ryan. Was, was that bogus? No, yeah, that was all bogus. That's oh, Danny, Dan, so can, can you, rec you guys recognize the voice, didn't you? Oh, no. Dan, Danny McEwen runs out there, and he's, he's pulling your leg, because he's, oh, okay. he's getting the phones warmed up. But I want to finish before I go to the phones, and we're going to go to the phones here. We're going to give these people an opportunity. Well, we never answered these guys. <laughs> Who cares? I no, about the Beatles. No, that's no, what no. I want to finish, the Beatles story. You want to finish that, that now? That's, that's what I want to yeah, finish. Hi, Ryan. Oh, hi, Ryan. <laughs> Boy, he looks just like Dan, doesn't he? Let's go back, and you're on the bus. <laughs> We're on the bus. There's a Rolls Royce in front of us. And Helen Shapiro, who I said, look, you know, was like a Brenda Lee of the United Kingdom, said, they're the Beatles. We said, what the? Where? Where? We started kicking on the bus. We thought there was cockroaches running around on the bus and stuff like that. Well, I, I, really, I didn't know. She said, they're the Beatles. Well, what Beatles? We don't know anything 1963. about 1963. Now the Rolls Royce stops, the bus stops. 
and the four guys get on the bus. They know me. I don't know them. Right? Shake hands, ba boom, ba bump, ba bing, ba dun. They go on the rolls. We get back on the bus. We're going wherever the heck we have to go. I come back home to the States. Month later, but a boom. <laughs> so much. She loves you, yeah, yeah. I said, I met those guys. <laughs> I met those guys. I know them, I know them. They were in a row. That was on the bus. I met those guys. <laughs> I'm telling you stories of Bobby Rydell right here on Round Town Live. Uh, but from, from that point, Bobby, I want to catch up, so I want to take a couple phone calls. We're going to have time to do that. Uh, from that point, that uh, Ryan calling uh, uh, no, no Ryan's going to call. Real, <laughs> real phone calls. Uh, uh, Uncle Sam called. Uncle Sam. Uh, Uncle yes. Sam called, and uh, it's that time. Back in 1960. Matter of fact, it was 1964. I did my basic training at Fort Dix, New Jersey, and I, my MOS was uh, clerk typist. <laughs> Went back, I was National Guard. Sleep well tonight, your National Guard is awake. I went back to my home unit after my basic training was, uh, was 32nd in Lancaster in uh, Philadelphia. And uh, there was no opening for uh, clerk typist. And I built bridges for five years when I was in the National Guard doing summer camp, right? We went to places like uh, Camp Drum, New York, Indian Town Gap, you know, so on and so forth. And I built light floating tactical rafts, barely bridges. Just no, no typing, though. No typing no, skills wasn't. Type. No, I no. Type. I thought I, you were going to say you entertain and stuff, because you did do something like that on down the line. Uh, Vietnam War was going on. Yeah, I... Uh, we Sad were, story you, t you told me uh, coming over here, and I, it, it's, it's em emotional when you're coming back from... Oh, you're over there entertaining okay. the troops in Vietnam, of yeah. course, and going places you said that Bob Hope would never be... Well, <laughs> I, you know, it was uh, a, a disc jockey from Philadelphia, his name Georgie Woods, uh, my drummer, Carl Matola, my manager, Frankie Day, a piano player by the name of Jimmy Wisner, who played accordion because we couldn't take pianos with us, and we had two go-go girls from New York City because the guys... In Nam, um, of course, at that time, wanted to see women. <laughs> Just any women. women. <laughs> okay. So uh, there was one time we were working in a place called Kantum, and we were working for 30, uh, 30 or 35 green berets. And I worked on a tennis court <clears throat> in Kantum. I was one of the songs that I was doing at that time was, "What kind of fool am I who never fell in love?" <laughs> It seems that I'm the... <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs> These guys are the... Don't worry, Bob, it's outgoing mail. It's not We're throwing it at the booths, you know, we're throwing it at the, at the, at the, at the con. We're throwing it at those people, you know. Now, go to play coup, do a show and play coup. First Cavalry Division. Guy who was in my squad at Fort Dix, New Jersey, Al Davola, was sitting there. Steel pot, M16 full pack, the whole nine yards. Yo, Bob, why don't you stay? No, I'm singing, I'm going home. <laughs> I, I came down for a while, you know. This. It was one of the best experiences, uh, Tim, in my life. It, it really was. I mean, I went through the field hospitals. I saw some really tragic situations, you know. Nobody wanted to be there. All of those guys didn't want to be there at that time. It was a commitment they made for the country, and they were there, and they did it. Unfortunately, when they came back, Nobody respected them like they respected Desert Storm, Korea, Japan, so on and so forth. But the greatest thing, when I left Anson Airport in, in Saigon, I came home with 150 guys. And the captain of the airplane, we were flying World Airways, which was chartered by MATS, Military Air Transport System. And we're coming in, and the captain says, gentlemen, we're now entering the United States of America. We're coming back to the world. And these guys just said, Bobby, get up and sing. And I sang, God bless America. And I mean, cry. Yeah, well, it's hard for you to say it now. I know, I know earlier, I mean, you can still yeah, see the I tears building I, I up in the eyes there. The car on the yeah, back, yeah. And uh, it, that, that's a tough, I mean, it, I, it, and, and then the end of the story, of course, uh, not that I'm a tough guy, you know, everybody thinks everybody from South Philadelphia, being Italian is a tough guy, you know, I'm not a tough guy, if I have to do something, I will do something. We go to, uh, we land in Hawaii, then from Hawaii to go back home to the United States, we're flying commercial airliner, and uh, I walk into the San Francisco airport, and there's a guy at that time with the, with the beads, with the thing, with the peace and the love, 
and I choked him. <laughs> Jumped on him. Be Bobby Wright. Bobby Wright. That's why we choked him. Well, there, there, there again, it's, and, and it's, it's good to see they're finally recognizing and, and giving some time. support to these guys. It's Vietnam veterans, people. I mean, big hand there. Yeah. Uh, they did their job. Bobby, I, I know we, uh, we promised everybody we're going to take phone calls. We ain't going to have time because we only got about, how much time we got left in the show? About two minutes left in the show. I want to thank you wholeheartedly for coming yeah, down here. Pleasure. And I hope to, to get you back down here and maybe Thanks, give buddy. these people an opportunity to call I'd in and ask some questions and stuff. Uh, but we're running out of time. And uh, I've got another person here from the group Cinderella. I believe he's going to come out here and everything. But, Bobby, real quick, you've got anything exciting? You're traveling with the, the guys still? And uh, we'll, be, uh, we'll be in Vegas in April. And then we'll be at, uh, when I say we, Frankie Avalon, Fabian, and myself, we'll be at Caesars twice. Uh, in the summertime in Atlantic City. I don't know the exact dates, Tim, but I think one's in June, one's in July, but it's with uh, two of uh, much older guys. <laughs> uh, no, but it's wonderful. We have a ball. All of the Philly game's going to be at the, the, there again. Keep an eye out for Bobby Rydell, Fabian, and Frankie, Frankie Avalon. Avalon. Frankie was a good friend of yours before he got big and you got big. I oh, mean, yeah. you guys Frankie knew he played trumpet and I played drums. Yeah, but this, this gentleman coming out here, I believe, is uh, with a group called. I'm going to steal this microphone sure. since we're not going to use it for that. Uh, this show, you never know what's going to happen. I'm going to get you to come over this way just a little bit so I don't have to stand up. No, I can stand up. What's your name? Jeff LaVar. And Jeff, you're with a group called Cinderella, right? Yeah. And you guys got something exciting happening right now? Well, we got a greatest hits album coming out. And when is that going to be? should be out in May. In May? And uh, if somebody's looking, are you guys doing any touring? Or are you going to open up a tour or do anything with that? With that? We may do a tour this summer. Yeah, but so you would definitely want to, you never know who's going to be on our set. This is Cinderella. You guys remember that? I mean, you want to check out their greatest hit album. And it's time, I guess, are, are you telling me it's time for to wrap it up or what, what do we got to do here? Uh, so I, I guess, are you telling me it's time to wrap it up? And it, from Cinderella, Bobby Rydell, let me introduce, hey, maybe you can get on with these guys and play with these guys. Who knows? Hey, Pat Boone did. Yeah, that, hey, I, I was going to ask you about that and didn't get around to it. Yeah. Motorcycle jacket, the whole work. Are, 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 are you telling me it's time to wrap it up, Danny? Somebody help me out here. It's time for us to get out of here. And Bobby, once again, thank you so much for coming out. And hopefully we'll have this gentleman come back and bring the Cinderella band. Who knows? But <laughs> tune in each week right here to Roundtown Live. Until next week, for the entire gang here, peace and love will bring you happiness. Until then, bye-bye.